Welcome to Cake Palooza. We are here in the first time slot of the day, which means we have two hours to shop. So let's go check out some of the vendors. This is my second year going to Cake Palooza, and for the second year in a row, we paid a little bit extra to go to the first time slot. And the reason that you would want to go to the first time slot, I guess there's two reasons. For us, it was more about pacing out our day. And then also if you're somebody who really wants a specific thing with a specific vendor that is going to be at that show, you're going to want to maybe try to get the first time slot. The vendors at all of the shows I think are really good about making sure they have set back some products for future time slots. So two of the events that we went to on Friday were uh, ticketed time slots. The final event was just, it was a longer event and you didn't have to come at a certain time or anything like that. So cake is one of those that has a time slot. I think we had two hours to shop from 10 to noon. And then we had to leave and there was another time slot that started maybe, maybe 30 minutes later. I'm not exactly sure how that, how that works out. So maybe it's an, like half hour in between. Um, anyway, Cake was a really, really great show. It's great last year. It was great this year. The only bummer was the weather. It did rain a little bit while we were there. Um, and at Cake, there's not, it's all shopping. There's nowhere to hang out or anything like that. So if you're there to shop, it's great. You can shop and then you, and then you go. Um, but there's nowhere to just chill and hang out or anything like that. It's just not that kind of event. I don't know exactly how many vendors would, were there. I would say somewhere in the realm of like maybe 25 to 30 vendors. So it's a nice smaller size. It's all on paved. Um, it's like in a parking lot. So it's like paved parking and all of the vendors have tents. So it's very easy to kind of get around and shop. Um, it's a little crowded, it's, it gets a little tight, but it's fun, not in an overwhelming way, I would say. Um, aside from a bunch of yarn vendors, there uh, was also a cupcake vendor, so you could grab a cupcake if you wanted. Um, there was Tough Woolens, which has sock soaps and balms and things like that, but we didn't get to all of them. I mean, even though it was a small event, you know, we were chatting with people, we were trying to film. So of course we didn't get to see every single thing that was there. Oh, we did get to go in the yarn truck, in the yarn birds truck, which was very cute um, and fun to see. And uh, you'll get to see some of the other vendors that we got to go to as well. I tried to pick out people that maybe we haven't highlighted in the past um, so that I can be showing new people on the channel. But of course we have last year's video if you wanna see some of what was there. There was a lot of repeat vendors, which I feel like says a lot about the way that the event is run, that people want to come back to it. First sale of the day. <laughs> so cute. It's really cute. Um, it's like a mini baby sock bag. Which With denim. Yeah, look. It's and there's some cute. cute little tie-dye. Oh, and this is like a waxed canvas. Yeah. I love that. So cute. Yay. Let's go check out everything else. Come on.
these are kits for the assigned pooling pattern. What was it called again? Octility by Nona Davenport. And then all of these are nine colors in different bases that go with the show colorway, which is over here. So these yarns and these stitch markers are all part of the Breakfast at Tiffany's collection. So these are the 25 colors from the Beatles collection that are releasing today, but they'll also be available for pre-order. This is the knit kit. It's the Swiss Army tool for knitters and crocheters. It has everything you need but needles and yarn. So this is the Daisy Jones collection and it's debuting here at the show. There's a 
Before our ticketed time slot was over at Cake, we actually needed to make our way over to Indy. So just Kent and I went to this. Um, we actually got invited to go to Indy to film this year, which was really nice. So thank you, Lisa. She's one of the um, coordinators. She reached out to us and asked us to come and film and gave us tickets, which was really, really sweet. I haven't been to Indy Untangled since 2021. I did not go uh, last year. Um, because, okay, I should say this, I should have said this in the beginning. It is a lot to go to three events on Friday. It, I honestly, it's too much. I wouldn't recommend going to all three events unless there's one caveat. If this is your once of a lifetime Rhinebeck trip, I do think it's worth it to just fit everything in. You're going to be tired. You might need to take some more time off of work at the beginning of the next week to recover. But if you just want to jam pack your experience, it could be worth it for you to go to all three. If you're somebody who comes to Rhinebeck every year, um, I would say like rotate around, like go to one one year, another another year. I think it's just too much to go to all three. We were definitely pretty drained by the time we got to the third event, um, but it doesn't mean we didn't have fun. Okay, so back to Indy. So um, the Indy Untangled tickets are also sold in time slots, so we were going to the second time slot. Now the way Indy Untangled is set up, it was actually four, five, four or five minutes away from Cake. So those are two events that are great to pair because they're really close to each other, or at least they were this year and they have been in the past. Both Cake and Indian Tangled um, were in the same location last year. Can't say what the future will hold, but that's, what, that's what's been happening for the past little while. So very easy to get from one to the other. Um, plenty of parking. At Indian Tangled, it is at like a horse horse venue there's there were no horses around Kent's really allergic to horses and he was like oh no are there going to be horses no the horses are not around <laughs> at least in that area so you're fine um, but there is a uh, like a dirt parking lot so there's a little bit of you know difficulty um, getting from the parking lot into the area once you're into the shopping area everything is paved it's very easy to get around the only other time you may have to walk through dirt and i say this just for anyone who maybe has some uh mobility aids or anything like that just to kind of prep you ahead of time so you can picture what's going to be happening at the event um, getting to one of the bathrooms we had to walk on dirt i think the other one you could go on the pavement to get there but anyway so it's at this big like horse event venue. And so there's two really long, um, I think they call them like stables. They're basically open air. Um, like there's a, a roof structure that's permanent, that's always there. And then it's open air on the sides. But this year they did put up, I don't know if that was already there in the Untangle put it up. There was one side had this like temporary, like it was plasticky, but it had, 
I don't know. It looked like it was it was more a little more permanent, but not totally permanent because it was raining. So it kind of blocked that out. And then a lot of the vendors had um, put up like tarps and things to protect their yarn. There was enough space, I think, at that event where the vendors as were able to prepare for the rain. Rain is really the theme of Friday because it rained a lot. When we were at Indian Tangled, um, it poured poured while we were there. But luckily we were already, you know, into the um, event venue that has all like smooth concrete. Um, so we didn't have to get rained on, which was nice. So there's two of those really long structures and there's quite a distance in between. You can walk it very easily. I mean, it might take you five minutes to walk from one to the other. And there's like the, I think, equal number of vendors in each one. Um, and they had uh, golf carts running people back and forth if you um, you know needed some assistance getting over there or maybe you just didn't want to go in the rain. They did have golf carts going in between the two buildings, which I thought was a really nice touch. Um, then since it's a ticketed time slot, I can't remember how long our time slot was. It was either an hour and a half or two hours. However, um, we were able to stay on a little longer than our um, time slot you're not able to go in early, like until your time slot starts, but we were able to like overlap a little bit into the next one to like finish up our shopping. Not sure if that's allowed, <laughs> but they didn't kick us out. We had a wristband um, that said like what time we were supposed to be there. So you have to kind of pace yourself a little bit between the two buildings so that you don't run out of time in your time slot. But there were so many great um, vendors there, as you will see. Um, we had a lot of fun um, chatting and talking with people. Um, I didn't do a ton of shopping shopping because um, I didn't get to shop at all at cake and it was just too busy like with talking with people filming and the rain and all of that um, at Indy I did a little bit of shopping a tiny bit um, but again it's just like I'm trying to figure out how to how to film and also like shop and also talk to people and have time for all of the things. So who knows, we'll, we'll be getting it figured out. Every year is a little bit different. Um, and then we probably spent 45 minutes or so in the first building and then walked over to the other one and glad we got there when we did because then it started to pour rain. We probably spent an hour in that second one um, filming, talking to people, our friends, um, Addie and Devin of Ruby and Roses were in that one. So of course we wanted to chat with them. Um, we tried to show as many show colorways as possible and then um, we made our way out. But before we left, we picked up some lunch. So something that makes Indy a little bit different is they do have some space to sit and hang out. You can knit and crochet. They also have these really cute um, photo opportunities. This was their 10th year. So they had some special like balloon arches and cool things made for their uh, 10th anniversary. But they they did have this in 2021. I don't know about last year, but this year they had it too. A really cute place to take photos with your friends. And they had a person, um, what, I don't know if they were a volunteer or a staff member, but they were there just to take your picture. So you know how when you're with a group of friends and like it's either somebody has to be out of the picture or you have to ask a stranger to take your picture there was somebody stationed there at the photo op to take your picture which I thought was also a very nice touch so then there was an area with plastic tables and chairs they did have it covered because they knew it was going to rain so it was a covered tent area so once you were in there as long as you weren't you know probably around the edge we didn't go in there because we didn't have time but um, you know people were in there hanging out and knitting um, so what's fun to do there is like do your shopping and then sit and hang out and get some food they had four food trucks maybe five four food trucks I think um, there was I know for sure some jerk chicken because Kent got some and then I got oh my gosh some of the best mac and cheese that I've ever had so after we ate or after we picked up our food we hopped in the car ate in the car and then we made our way to the final event for Friday We made it to Indian Tangled. There's a break in the rain. So the way this is laid out is on one side is a whole barn and it is a covered barn. It looks like there's some, one side has like closure. So we're in the first barn and then all the way over there on the other side is a whole nother barn.
So since it's Indie Untangled's 10th year, they decided to dye a 10th anniversary colorway and the traditional uh, like gift is tin. So this colorway is called Tin Roof Rusted. I think that's really cute. All right, you're ready? We're gonna head to the other barn and see what's over there. So she takes the roving and literally with a paintbrush, hand paints it and then hand spins all of this gorgeous yarn.
Something that I think is really fun about here at Indian Tangled is even though you have a time slot to go shop, there's a whole place for you to sit and knit at the lounge and then there's food vendors. So right now it's not pouring rain anymore, which is great. So there's lots of time to sit and hang out with friends. Okay, so I got some mac and cheese that has bacon and breadcrumbs and Kent got some jerk chicken. So we're gonna kind of eat this in the car on the way to the next thing. So before we get into the part I previously recorded about wool and folk, I just wanted to say that after like having a few days after the event and getting to see um, things that all of the vendors had experienced, uh, I just, I don't know. So we were not sure if we really wanted to include Woolen Folk at all in our video, just after everything that's happened and the vendors are sharing like just the way they were treated prior to the day and the expectations that were not met and all of that. But then we thought if we don't include Woolen Folk, if we don't include the vendors that we got to film, then we're doing a disservice to them as well. So we wanna highlight everyone that we were able to see. Also, I wanna acknowledge that my experience was very different than what a lot of people experience because I got there a lot later in the day. So you're gonna hear me, hear me talk about it in a more kind of like calmer, kind of glossed over sort of tone because that is what I experienced. But now that we're able to get more information from the people who were there, from the vendors who were there, I do think it's really important to listen to them, listen to their experiences and what happened to them. So we were dealing with something a little bit different this year. We actually had Toaster with us here at the Airbnb. So we were trying to figure out, you know, it's a long day. We left at, I would wanna say nine in the morning we left, maybe a little bit earlier, and we weren't gonna get back until like seven o'clock at night. So we wanted to come and let Toaster out at, in the middle of the day. So we kind of debated what we were gonna do. We thought maybe we'll bring him with us and have the van and that way he can just like be in the van all day and we can take him out when we need to. But then we knew the parking was gonna be hard at Woolen Folk, which is the final event of the day. And so we were like, well, maybe that's not a good idea. And then we thought we might just drive back to the house and then go to Woolen Folk and like let Toaster out, but it was already creeping into the afternoon. So Woolen Folk is an event that is not ticketed time slots, or at least it hasn't been in the past. This is the third year of it. The event is from noon to seven o'clock. And last year, I just remember having such a good time um, hanging out there. There's lots of shopping, but also it was just such a good time. Just like there was spaces to sit, spaces to have food. There was music. It was just such a good vibe. And so I wanted to get over there and experience that um, and like have time to hang out there. Not just rush through and shopping. Um, I guess not rush because I... I feel, you know, you do feel a little rush when in the ticketed time slots, but they're all different events. Some are for shopping, some are for hanging, and I was looking forward to hanging out at Woolen Folk. And so um, what we landed on is Kent uh, drove me to Woolen Folk. So it was about a 20 minute drive from Indian Tangled to Woolen Folk. He dropped me off and then he drove another half hour back to the house, let Toaster out and then drove half hour back. So he spent like two hours you know, cycling around doing this. And in the meantime, I was gonna get to meet up with Amy and Bree at Woolen Folk. Well, that never happened. <laughs> I never met up with them because by the time I got to Woolen Folk, it, I think it was three o'clock. And so it had already been um, open for three hours at that point, but I had another four hours to go. And I um, walked in, this was a new venue this year, so I had no idea what to expect. So I walked in, I went to the tent to get a wristband, to show my ticket and get a wristband. And um, I didn't leave that space for almost an hour. I was meeting people and chatting with people, which was a lot of fun. And it turned out to be a good thing because um, when the event started, uh, it was very, very, very crowded. I did not experience that myself because again, I got there at three and then I was talking to people till almost four o'clock. So I didn't go in until like the last three hours, like into all of the buildings and everything. But um, Amy and Brie were there and they, by the time I got there or by the time I was ready to meet up with them, 
they were like, we're going to take a break. <laughs> like it's been very crowded and we need to take a break and we're going to go have some um, food and like get a beer and everything like that. So this year, Woolen Folk was in uh, Catskill, um, which is a, like a cute little town, but it was, it was a strange layout. It was, um, some people, some vendors were in tents. Um, there was like a, a one big tent in the middle and then there was like tents on the outside. And then there was a building here and an upstairs and a downstairs and a building over here and upstairs that we never even got to. Like there were, honestly, I felt like there were too many vendors um, for me to even get to see them all. I wish it had been a two day event so that it wasn't as crowded and so that it was easier to get to everyone. What I also missed about or what I also feel like was lacking this year at Woolen Folk was the space to just hang out. Something that was so great about their previous location is there was, you know, there was plenty of space first to like walk around in the vendor space and then it felt very chill and nice and like you got to see everybody. And then there was a whole area where there was music and food and um, picnic tables to sit and people, and of course the rain did make everything harder this year. It made accessibility harder, it made things muddy, it made things not great for vendors. Like it was just, it was a hard, rain kind of made things hard on Friday. Um, but aside from the rain, even if it hadn't been raining, it wasn't an accessible event for a lot of people. Um, so that's something that they need to look at, I think, and, and evaluate and, and maybe make a change on. Um, but the other thing, like personally for me, is I wish, what I loved about Woolen Folk was the, the area to hang out. That was so much fun. It was like, you didn't have to feel like, okay, I just gotta go shop and then I gotta go, right? You got to go shop and then you got to go hang out. Um, so I really hope that they are like looking at all the feedback on the event and making it kind of, you know, adjusting and making it better so that it is um, something that is similar to what it has been in the past. Um, so by the time I made it into go look at everything, it was not as crowded anymore, which ended up being really nice. So I guess what I would say for Woolen Folk is, let's see what they plan for next year. Hopefully not the same venue because it's not, not a great venue, too crowded, too many people, um, like hard to find all the vendors, not a space to hang out. Like I just, it just was such a great vibe. Yeah, last year was so great. Um, so hopefully they're making some adjustments. Um, but also if you are somebody who really has a hard time with crowds um, for a lot of these events, it's nicer to go like later. Like for Rhinebeck, I will always say if you're somebody who has a hard time with crowds, don't go on Saturday. Just don't go on Sunday. It's so much nicer. <laughs> it's just, you'll see it in the video. It's so much less crowded. It's easier to shop. It's easier to chat. It's easier to get food. It's easier for all of those things. Um, so if you go to Woolen Folk next year and you're like, ugh, crowds, like don't show up at noon. Don't show up right away. Like give it a few hours, let people kind of do their thing and then go in because the last three hours was a lot less crowded. I was able to walk through. I was able to look at things. I still didn't make it to everything. There was just so much there. I never even made it. Like it was 6.45, the event ends at seven and I was just getting to the second building and I never made it upstairs, which makes me really sad because I feel like, um, Kent and I were pretty upset with ourselves because we feel like we didn't get to um, represent all the vendors as well as we wanted to at Woolen Folk. Of course, we never get to all of the vendors and anything that we go to, but we really try to like show you at least the scope of the event. And I think because of the how crowded it was, because of how, um, well, we also just got there late. We just had a lot going on on Friday. Um, so yeah, I just, we feel like we didn't get to really show you everything that was there but also just because of the way the event was set up. So we really tried to show you what we could on Friday. We were, we were draining, drained <laughs> by the end of that point, but um, I did enjoy uh, walking through. I also got to meet so many people. Uh, at the very end, I was meeting a group from South Africa that came um, all the way for Rhinebeck and they were adorable. They had, one of them had made bags. So they all had like matching, uh, matching canvas bags, amazing canvas and cork bags with different fabrics. And it was just super cool. I'm going to be showing my haul in the next Rhinebeck video. So I'll show you what they gave me. Okay. That's enough chat about Woolen Folk. Let's go and see everything that it looks like. I can't believe that you came into 
All in all, Friday was such a fun day. I, if I went back and did it differently, I would just like 
scale down maybe a little on the events. So for next year, that's probably what I'm gonna be doing. Who knows, we'll see. It's so hard to decide between, you know, the, the FOMO of it and getting to see everything, but also remember that there's amazing vendors, amazing people, at everything. So, you know, know yourself and how you do events and uh, choose choose according to that. And also you're gonna see everyone on Saturday at Rhinebeck if that's something that you're looking forward to doing. Now in our next Rhinebeck video, it's going to be Saturday and Sunday at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. We're showing off some vendors. We're kind of doing it vloggy style so you can see everything. And then we're going to do a house tour of our Airbnb. That has been the highlight of the weekend. Being able to stay with friends, come home every night, hang out and knit together has been so much fun. And we're going to be doing, uh, showing off the things that we purchased, some of our um, favorite memories and things that we um, like, you know, why we chose to buy those things. So uh, you can look out for that in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.